What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and as you can see, I am not in my room or in my normal filming space, I'm actually on vacation right now, and I honestly hadn't planned on doing any reviews while I was here, I you know, saw the Atlanta United game yesterday, wanted to talk about that, but I'm just like, you know, there's not really a whole lot to talk about there, typical for the MLS, you know, just bad refereeing, bad, all that stuff. Um, and of course, you know, not really going to have a whole lot of time to try to catch up on my TV shows and review them here either. So I'm just like, you know, I'm going to take this week off from reviewing pretty much everything, Atlanta United, Chelsea, any TV shows as well. And I know I've taken off several weeks on TV shows, but I watched the, the FA or the Community Shield or whatever today. And I'm just like, you know what? I've got to talk about this because frankly, in, in my opinion, this is a sign to me that we are slowly becoming Arsenal or Liverpool. One of those teams, you know, that just, we're up there, but we're never really going to do anything else again. And the reason I say that is because based on what I saw today, I'm convinced that Sarri is going to last about half a season and then he's going to be gone. Because <laughs> he hasn't got it. He hasn't got what it takes to make it in this league. And I realized, oh, but... It's so early. How can you say that about... Because here's the thing. Watching our preseason, Perth Glory, it was okay. We should have finished our chances, but for the most part, we were a good team. Inter Milan, it was okay. We should have finished our chances, but we were a better team. Arsenal, it was okay. We sh should have finished our chances, but we were the better team. Where have I heard that before? All last season. All of Mourinho's second or third season before he went crazy and then we started just getting crushed by teams we should have no business getting crushed by. It's the same stuff we've seen for the past couple seasons. Except now, Sarri comes in and not only are we not finishing our chances, but now we look weak defensively. And that is something that I can definitely say for a fact Mourinho and Conte both did not bring to the table. They both made sure we were at least strong defensively. So even in a game where we can't finish any of our chances or we're not looking good attacking-wise, well, maybe we'll lose one nothing because we can't finish and the other team will get one chance you know, that they'll finally be able to put in. But we're going to put up a solid defensive display. Today, in the, in the fucking community shield of all things, we looked weak. We look slow, we look bored, we look lazy, we look languid, we look terrible defensively, we look terrible offensively. We look the worst we've ever looked. And that's saying a lot, because we've had some very bad games. And the only reason, uh, you're probably thinking, but 2 nothing. I mean, we've lost several, I mean, we lost 4 nothing to Bournemouth and Watford last year. How can this be worse than that? Because Man City looked bad today. For what Man City has, for the talent they had on the field, they should have put so many more chances away. It should have been at least 6 or 7 nothing, but they couldn't finish their chances. They were too busy trying to possess instead of trying to score goals. They were dominating the game. We were never involved in that. And for us, Chelsea FC, one of the best teams in England, have won at least a trophy except for one year for the past several years, won the league twice in the past four seasons, for us to look like we're just not even involved in the game. Like we're pretty much just there as cones for Man City to do a little training session. That's what this game was. It was a training ses session for Man City because we were not involved. We were not there mentally, physically, we were not there. It was the most embarrassing display I think I've ever seen. And there are several players to blame, several players that should not be playing based on what I've seen all of preseason. And guess what? Sorry's like, I'm going to put them in again. You know? And where have I heard that before? Um, oh, yeah. Mourinho. How many times did he play players like, who was it? Um, was it David Luiz that he was playing all the time? I feel like it was David Luiz. With Conte, you know, playing players like uh, Cahill and Alonso and Zappacosta, playing these players that don't deserve to be out there and then they underperform, and then we lose. That's what this game was. Murata, David Luis, Alonso, who else? Barkley, uh, honestly, Caballero. All of these players that don't deserve to be out there because they've been terrible all preseason, and they're still out there. And you could say what you want about, oh, they're trying to prove that they still deserve a chance. 
Well, well, you give these chances to these players and say, go prove yourself, and then they go out there and they don't do it three games in preseason. What makes you think game number four is going to be any different? There's nothing different. There's nothing that changed today. The only thing that changed is we faced better opposition. And guess what? It showed. Arsenal, Inter Milan, Perth Glory, all teams that are just kind of either average or not that good. And we were the better team in those games because they're not that great. We face a team that's actually good in Man City, has a lot of talent, and guess what? We get dominated because we are just like the Arsenals and the Inter Milans, you know, those teams that are good but not great. And that shouldn't be us. With the talent we have, with the money we have, that shouldn't be us. And granted, we're still missing Conte, which is a big loss because, frankly, in the midfield, we were dominated today because we had no speed in there, and Conte will bring that. I'll admit that. I'll admit that once Conte comes back in, this side will improve. However, up top, we still don't have a striker. Giroud and Batshuayi, I hope they come back in. I hope they just absolutely tear it up because Murata is not it. He's done. Pedro, back to his old self today. Most of preseason, he's looked pretty good. He's looked like, okay, maybe he's going to be involved. Maybe he's going to be you know, scoring some goals, putting uh, some good crosses in, working the ball around. Today, back to his old self. Dribbling into pressure, passing it to absolutely nobody, holding it way too long, and the players making runs completely just not looked at. That was him today. Completely worthless. And yet hudson Adoy, the 17-year-old, tearing it up. Creating chances, looking positive, taking on Kyle Walker, of all people. Probably the only fullback that he shouldn't be able to outpace, and he's still creating a few chances. Probably created the best chance that we had all game, when he cut inside and had a shot and Bravo dropped it. That was probably our best chance until the very end where Barkley into Abraham. But that was from hudson Adoy, the 17-year-old. And so when the second goal goes in for Man City, you're thinking, okay, Time to get Murata or Pedro off. Time to get one of those two off. Get somebody on who's going to be more positive. Maybe push Barkley up the field. Let him be a bit more attacking because that's where he needs to be. Let's take hudson Adoy off the field. Stupid! And it's decisions like that. Conte made those same decisions last year. The one positive player, the two positive players on the field, he, he takes them off. And he leaves players like Bakayoko on or Pedro on. You know, the players that aren't doing anything. He leaves Murata on for 90 minutes, even though he's creating absolutely nothing. Sorry does the same thing today. And all I'm thinking is, what's changed? We're still leaving our most terrible players on the field and taking off the one player that was creating something for us. Am I the only one watching this game? Because I'm shocked between all of the coaches, everybody on the bench that's watching this game and trying to analyze it and say, all right, what can we do to try to get ourselves back into this? I'm shocked that all of those coaches look at this game and say, you know, majority decision, um, hudson Adoy off. Is that what you guys are thinking? Yeah, I think we need to get him off. You know, he just he's not doing a whole lot for us today. He's just kind of there. <laughs> How can you look at that and see, oh, yeah, hudson Adoy's coming off. This is just stupid to me. So, yeah, that happened. You look in the midfield, Fabregas, run by. Jorginho, run by. Terrible passes. Barkley, was Barkley playing today? Was he playing today? Huh. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had that one cross at the end of the game. Did he get subbed on? Because I don't remember him in the first half or majority of the second half. That's how bad he was today. I mean, he was practically, he could have just honestly stood in the middle of the field, and I probably would have noticed him more than he was playing today. Just absolutely useless. In my opinion, is it his fault? No. We saw in preseason, the best game he had was when he was playing further up the field. He's not a center mid. Now, do we have any other center mids? Well, Bakayoko, I understand not wanting to play him. But then why don't we go get another one? We brought in Jorginho. We still have Conte. Let's go get somebody else then, though, that will fit that system. Because right now, Fabregas isn't showing it. Jorginho is still growing into the team. He's not showing it. And so that center midfield three today, terrible. Absolutely useless. And now, when Conte comes back in, yes, I'll grant. That will make it better. But for right now, 
we need to find a solution for when Conte is not available for whatever reason because we can't always rely on him every single game. There's going to be games where he's a bit more tired or there's going to be a game where he might get suspended for you know, his fifth yellow or something. We've got to be prepared for that. Based on what I saw today, we're not. We are not prepared for when we lose Conte because there's nothing in the midfield for us. No speed, no strength, no nothing. No defensive capability. It was absolutely awful. Now on to defense. Because this is the one that's going to give me the biggest headache all year. Because people are still just like, oh, Alonzo, he's so good. Can you not? Look at what he's done for the past two seasons. He's so good. He's not that good. He's a player who is average, who benefited from a good system. Because it put him in the perfect position for him. Now that we're moving him to left back, he's being shown for the average player that he is. Because he was just destroyed today. Marez said, oh, I'm going against Alonzo? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that's a good joke. Uh, oh, I am going against Alonzo? Oh, okay, easy game. And just tore him up all day long. He's out of position. He's being run by. He's being passed behind. He was not involved in today's game. And when he was, it was because he was out of position and letting them have space. Dava Luis, we knew he wasn't a defender for a two-center-back two pairing. And yet, that's where he's been all preseason. Huh. Could it be that Sarri has absolutely lost his mind and decided, you know what, David Luis is my defender for this season? Because that's stupid. We've got Rudiger. We've got Christensen. Zuma should be coming back soon. We've got players to play there. Honestly, I'd prefer to see Espili Cueto in the middle than David Luis because he's not a good defender. And today, it was shown. He was absolutely destroyed by Aguero, by Jesus. Pretty much every Man City player that took him on was like, I got this. Except for the one time that Marez messed up his dribble and David Luis was like, Oh, yes, I got the ball. Oh, gosh, there's pressure. Let me kick it out of bounds for a throw in like a high school player because that's pretty much what he is. So all of this stuff, you've got Rudiger and Espili Cueta, pretty much the only two defenders that actually were doing something today. And unfortunately, two out of your back four playing well does not equal success. Um... That pretty much equals fa failure. <laughs> Two out of four, 50%. That's a failing grade, thank you very much. So, I'm confused. Christensen, why isn't he playing? Why have we gone and gotten a, an actual left back instead of having these two wing backs? You know, why aren't we doing anything? I, I don't understand how Sorry can look at this and be like, you know what, everything's fine. And obviously he's still not in charge of the transfers because we're stupid and we don't let the manager have much say in the transfer market. But how can the people in charge of transfers not look at this and say, you know what, we need to go get an actual left back. You know what, we need to go get maybe uh, another center back so we can kind of move David Luis and Cahill out. You know what, we probably need to go get another midfielder to take over for Fabregas because he's getting too old to do this. You know what, we probably need to go get a striker that we know can finish a quality striker and just move Murata on because he's not good enough. But nothing's changing. Nothing is changing. Everything's the exact same. We're still in the same situation we were at the end of last season. Where Conte left the club and Sarri came in and a lot of people were saying, oh, this is going to be the change. This is going to be, you know, Sarri's an attacking manager. He's going to come in. He's going to be all attack-minded. He's going to change Chelsea for the better. Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed, and you'll see this with a lot of attack-minded managers, our defense has gotten worse. That second goal, perfect example. A five-on-three situation. That would never have happened. Last, you know, last season, Chelsea, Mourinho's Chelsea. Five-on-three wouldn't happen. There could be like a three-on-three three or a two-on-two two or something like that. Counterattacks still happened, but to see five Man City players breaking forward and Chelsea's three defenders just backpedaling like, what do we do? I mean, that's embarrassing. That is an embarrassing display, and it shows just how bad having an attack-minded manager can be. So, with all that being said, what are your guys' opinions? I mean, do you feel the same way that I do? Do you think this is going to be another bad season for us? Uh, do you think that 
just give them time. It will get better. Let me know because, in my opinion, things are not getting better. They're just getting worse, and that's very disappointing because I don't want to end up supporting a club that is just average. You know, I support this club for the longest time because we were one of the best. You know, I grew up supporting them. We were one of the best teams. We were always challenging every year. We're in a Champions League spot. We're fighting for the title every year. We're fighting for trophies every year. And this season, just based on what I've seen so far, it feels like we're going to be lucky to make it to the top four, to the top, honestly, six. There could be one of those mid-table sides, like Burnley last year, that just all of a sudden has a great year. They might top us this year. Because we're not looking like one of the top teams in England. So, now should be an exodus. It should be move these average players on that have no right playing for a club like Chelsea. Move them on, bring in some good quality players that are going to come in and they're going to be world class. They're going to play for a team that is world class. Because enough's enough. I'm sick of this... Eh, you know, Alonso, he's good enough. Eh, Zappacosta, he's good enough. Eh, David Luiz, he's good enough. I'm tired of this good enough. We should be buying the best of the best players. So, anyway. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts? All that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to Chelsea Reviews. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.